The other day, my son, Michael, was out on a tree job. He was delivering and planting trees, and the person said to him, hey, I have this piece of scrap iron in the back of the yard here. How about trading it for a couple trees? And my son looked at him and said, absolutely. And he came home with us. Now, most people would be upset when you send somebody out to do a job and you're supposed to come back with money after you finish the job, but not here at Highland Hill Farm. We look at this as just more inventory that sits in our yard, and when we need this, we will have it and we can use it. This would cost quite a bit of money if we had to go buy a big piece of iron that size. So I'm very happy my son did that. Even though we have no use for it now, that day will come when this will be something that we will use. And when that day comes, we'll be thankful we have it. And incidentally, this thing will barely rust. This is Highland Hill Farm in Fountainville, PA. We grow trees and shrubs. And one thing we're not afraid of losing is our business model. And this is a post that's part of our business model. As strange as this may sound, we let people come and hunt here. All we ask is they bring us a locust cedar or pressure treated fence post, a 12 foot post, and then they can hunt for the day. The reason we do that is we want to protect our trees and shrubs from marauding deer. So we're building a deer fence on a bunch of different farms that we own and people come and bring us a post and then they hunt for the day. Now if they can't bring us a post, we usually find something else like some, some hose that we could use or maybe a hose reel like a used hose caddy or something like that. But generally speaking, we let people hunt for the day and if they get a deer, they get three free days. If you get two deer in any part of the season, you can hunt the rest of the season for free and you get 25 worthless US dollars. Now who would want to steal that business model? Well, we also have other things that we do here at Highland Hill Farm. We own a number of properties out west where we let our customers go looking for Indian artifacts, dinosaur bones, and fossils. We also have places for people to come and go bird watching. And we also allow people to go hiking on our properties. So if you want to, you know, come to see Highland Hill Farm and see our business model, I'm sure you're not going to take it home with you, but you might take home a plant or two that you could improve your backyard with. So just give us a call at Highland Hill Farm on Route 313 in Fountainville, PA at 215-651-8329. Thank you. Have a good one. We'll This is a rock we found out in the field while we were planting trees. We've never seen a rock like this in the area. It's definitely weird. Maybe you could tell me more about it or what it is. It could possibly be a meteorite. We're not certain. It was found on our farm, Highland Hill Farm, in Fountainville, PA, near Doylestown. No other rocks were in the field. It was in a field that was solid clay and the clay had not been turned. It was an area that we were just starting to farm that had been a pasture previously. So I don't believe the field was ever plowed, but it was down deep in the clay. If you have any idea what it might be, give us a call at 215-651-8329 or stop out and see it. Thank you. This is another picture of this rock that we found. We at Highland Hill Farm also have places where you can go and search for weird rocks, minerals, and artifacts. We have a place in Milan, PA, where we grow trees, where you can search for Indian artifacts. And in Truth or Consequences, New Mexico, we have places where you can go searching for dinosaur bones, fossils, and for meteorites. Our, our Truth or Consequences farm is the northernmost limits of the Chihuahuan Desert, which is the largest desert in North America, starting up in Mexico and ending up in Truth or Consequences, New Mexico at our ranch. Our ranch is the northern limit of the Chihuahuan Desert, so it's a good place to look for meteorites. However, this was found in Doylestown, PA, and we were really surprised to, to find this kind of a rock there. The only test I ran on the rock was with a, a, a magnet, and it was not magnetic. So that rules out a large deposit of iron in this rock. 
If you'd like to look at this rock, you can stop into our office, or if you want to go hunting for something like these rocks, you can. We're at 5275 West Swamp Road. This is Highland Hill Farm. We raise and sell predominantly arborvitas and screening and buffering trees for people in Northeast United States. Decisions, decisions. What should I plant? Should I plant a green giant or should I plant a Leland Cypress? Both trees are excellent trees for the landscape. Both trees make great screening trees, but there are differences. This is a green giant <clears throat> planted next to Leland cypresses. They were all planted at the same time. And the green giant here shows a much denser, fuller conformation than the Leland cypresses. Now these are all planted in a heavy shaded area with a full canopy above them. But they do get about two to three hours in the morning of morning sunlight. But you can see that the Green Giant is a superior tree to the Leland Cypress in the shade. These Lelands have some yellowing on the inner needles and that it was in part caused by stress that they received from last winter. Last winter we had an exceptionally cold winter and many of the Leland Cypresses burned over somewhat. These had some burn that they have recovered to some degree, but the Green Giant had no damage to it whatsoever. These plants have been in here for about two years. They were planted when they were three foot high and right now they're between five and six foot high. And so you can see, if you're going to plant in a shady location, that the Green Giant is a better plant than the Leland Cypress. We at Highland Hill Farm grow thousands of Leland Cypresses and Green Giants. And we do recommend both of them for shaded locations. Not full shade, but shaded locations. They need a few hours sun a day. But as you can see from this video, the Green Giant is a superior plant than the Leland Cypress. This field of green giants was planted about a month ago. And in this field of 500 green giants that we planted, we only lost two. And they were both on the end. This one died, and this one over here died. And the reason these died was we had a fox. And as strange as it may sound, the fox killed them. But how did the fox kill them? Well, what the fox did was he chewed on the water line. And then we had to make a splice in the water line, so it shortened the water line because we didn't have uh, extra tubing with us at the time when we spliced and re repaired the line. So the lines did not come all the way to the end of the rows. And because of that, when we put the drip water onto the trees, these two at the end of the rows did not get sufficient amounts of water. And that's why they died. So the fox killed these two. But we expect to have losses, and it's okay, especially if it's a fox. Now, if it were from a rabbit, we'd be very upset. We'd want to shoot it. In fact, we would. If it was from a deer, we'd kill it. But the most important thing and critical thing in growing these arborvitaes, especially if you plant them like these were in the middle of the summer, is to make sure you have a water system on it so that you can properly water the trees. You can't expect a consistent and uniform result on your trees if you don't have proper watering. So if you have any questions on growing green giant arborvitaes or other arborvitaes, give us a call at Highland Hill Farm. We grow thousands of arborvitaes and we specialize in the giant green arborvitae.